Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am the Catholic Homemaker and I share all things faith, education, and homemaking. Every Thursday, I post a Thursday theology video where I share topics inspired by my Instagram followers. To follow me on Instagram, go to at catholic.homemaker and hit that follow button so you can keep up to date with my day-to-day -day lifestyle and homemaking tips. And don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you can be updated whenever I post a video. Today's Thursday Theology stems off of the last talk I had, which was on marriage and relationships. Now, it is a topic concerning contraception and natural family planning, also known as NFP. In 1968, Pope Paul VI wrote an encyclical titled Humanae Vitae, which answers all of the questions regarding contraception and NFP. So today, I'm going to be going through that encyclical, explaining it to you, and so you understand what exactly the church teaches about contraception and natural family planning. Pope Paul VI wanted to address three bigger topics that were going around concerning this whole idea of contraception. First of all, the idea of population control and the use of contraceptives to help with this certain issue or problem in society. The second thing is the dignity of a woman and the fact that she wants to work or whatever it may be. And number three, the idea of humans wanting control over their own bodies and their own lives and what they do with their lives. So more children means less control. There are some who are not in favor of this encyclical because Pope John the 23rd before Paul the 6th set up a commission of people to discuss the topic so that it can be presented in a way so that society can understand or at least the people of the church can understand why we are doing or saying the things that we are. In this commission there were different kinds of people, medical professionals, there were married couples, laymen, priests, etc. so that they can discuss the topic and express how exactly it should be presented to the public. The problem is that during this commission, a lot of the people were in favor of contraception and thinking that it would be best to allow it and change the church teaching. Now, something we need to understand is that when it comes to teachings like this, the problem isn't just discussing biology, psychology, sociology, so anything like that. It's not only about that. It's about the fact that human beings are both natural human beings and also supernatural, meaning call to eternal life. And so we can't just base our answer on biology or psychology or physiology or whatever it may be. That's not enough. We are called to a greater purpose, which is heaven. So how are we going to be able to address these questions and live them out in our day-to-day -day lives with the fact in mind that we have heaven to look forward to. And that's really where our reward is. So after this commission, Pope Paul VI came out with this encyclical. And while it didn't totally represent what the commission wanted, he represented what the truth of the church really is and what the truth has always been. He definitely wasn't in favor of changing church teaching. That never is the answer, to be honest with you. It never works. And so he came out with this encyclical to really explain why it is that we are, as a church, do not agree with contraception. First things first, marriage comes from God. God is love. And so our marriage has to represent love itself, and that is God. And the one thing we need to keep in mind is that marriage is not a chance event. It is not a coincidence that you are meant for your spouse. God ordained it that way from the beginning. St. Paul says that marriage is supposed to symbolize the love between Christ and his church. Our love for our spouse should be so deep and so real and so strong that it brings forth new life. And that's exactly what the church and Christ do together. They say that the Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son, meaning that the Father and the Son love one another so, so much that it is represented in a spirit. The Holy Spirit represents that love between the Father and the Son. Imagine a person of the Trinity that represents love. So, looking at this from a different angle, from the angle of marriage, your children represent the love between you and your spouse. That is why the Catechism says, marriage and conjugal love, which is sex, are by their nature ordained toward the procreation and education of children. That means marriage and sex are meant for the creation of children. In addition, it says, children are really the supreme gift of marriage and they contribute in the highest degree to the parents' welfare. All right, 
let's talk about what he says regarding sex. He says specifically, and as the catechism also quotes, sex is noble and worthy. It is noble and worthy even during a woman's infertile time. God made it. God made it this way. It is through God's wisdom that a woman is only fertile during a specific time of the month. God ordained it this way. He created it this way. And this is how he wants it. I want to make sure that I say that sex is good even during a woman's infertile period. Meaning when she cannot have children and she's having sex, that's okay. Because it is contributing to the couple's welfare and well-being and connection as a couple. I just want to stop this video for one moment and say that this video isn't really about those who are currently struggling with infertility. While I would love to talk about that in another topic, today is mostly about contraception and the use of them in marriage as well as natural family planning. I know there are those who are struggling and I just want to say that my heart goes out to you and I pray daily for those who are struggling to conceive. I pray that God will bless you abundantly in whatever way he has planned for your life. So with the understanding that a woman's natural cycle allows her to be fertile and infertile at certain times of the month, all unnatural means of contraception are forbidden by the church. This includes the pill, IUD, diaphragms, phones, pulling out. Bet you didn't think that one was, 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 yeah, it's not good. Also condoms or solitary or mutual masturbation and sodomistic practices. And truthfully, I don't even know what sodomistic practices are, but I'm sure they, they just sound, they just, yeah. The encyclical also addresses the matter of tolerating or choosing a lesser evil so that you can avoid a greater evil. He talks about how it is not the same as doing an evil so that good can come out of it. He makes it very clear. It is never lawful or okay to do a great evil so that good can come out of it. Even if that good concerns the well-being of a family member, a society, or even an individual. So what he's trying to say is that even though your intention might be to space out your family or to avoid some sort of psychological distress or whatever it may be as far as the reason for using contraception, it doesn't matter what the reason is to use any form of unnatural, whether permanent or temporary sort of contraception is wrong and it is not okay no matter what your intention is. So he goes on to say that if a well-grounded reason were to arise as far as not choosing to have children at a specific time, then it is okay to use the woman's regular reproductive cycle. This is not the same as contraception. You are not getting in the way of conception. You are just not having sex during your fertile period, which just means that you are trying to space out your children or refrain from having children any longer, considering that there is a well-grounded reason. Now, a well-grounded reason, he goes on to say, is something sort of a physical or psychological ailment of the husband or wife, or even some outside circumstances, meaning, for example, finances. He goes on to talk about the difference between contraception and NFP. Now with NFP, you are using what nature has provided you. You're using your faculties in accordance with nature. With unnatural contraceptives, you are using something outside of nature to obstruct the generative process. And that's why contraception is very different from NFP. He goes on to say that the difference between contraception and NFP is the fact that whereas in one, you are avoiding having sex during your fertile period, which is abstinence, which is also self-control and discipline. Whereas in the other option with contraception, you are just having sex whenever you want or allowed to have sex whenever you want, but in addition, adding an unnatural element to avoid the natural generative process. Now, in addition to this, the intention of both of these people who are using contraception and those who are using NFP is the same. They want to control how many children they have and they want to be able to live their life in a way that is sort of planned. 
And in this case, he also says that it is okay for couples to have sex during an infertile period so that the intimacy between that couple can really be expressed. So NFP is basically a way to track the natural rhythm of your body, looking at the first day of your period until the last day of your period and seeing where in between you are ovulating. Now, a woman naturally ovulates one day in the month and that egg is free or able to be connected to a sperm for 24 hours. And, but before that, about four days, and after that, about three days, there is a whole period of ovulation where a woman is actually fertile. NFP is very reliable given that you practice it the right way. A lot of people think that they practice NFP perfectly and then end up having a baby when they didn't want one. But as long as you know your cycle, you know the natural rhythm of your body, you will be able to space out your children given well-grounded reasons if that is the choice that you and your spouse have made. If you have any questions about this or if your cycle is irregular, make sure you talk to your doctor about how to really be able to track your cycle so that you are better able to use NFP. A question that might arise after watching this video is, well, does the church say that we're supposed to have as many children as possible? No, the church doesn't say that. The church is allowing you and your spouse to make that decision in a well-discerned manner. There is so much more to this topic that can be discussed and maybe I can make this into a series if more questions arise. But for now, go to my Instagram at catholic.homemaker and let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video. Leave your comments below as well and let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about.